the Lisa. Hi everybody, I'm Lisa. Behind the camera is Bill. Together we are the Lisa. Welcome to our channel and welcome to season two. We are blasting off to infinity and beyond and we don't want you to miss a minute of the fun. So make sure you click that subscribe button down below. We've made it to New Orleans Square here in Disneyland, which is based on the 19th century New Orleans in Louisiana. This land was the first land to open after Disneyland was already open. It opened in July of 1966 and Walt Disney officiated the opening ceremony. This was actually one of his last public appearances before he passed away. So New Orleans Square is actually full of a lot of little gems that Walt Disney himself placed here and they were his ideas. This land cost $18 million to build, which was actually more than the United States paid to purchase the state of Louisiana in the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. They only paid $15 million for the entire state. That is so crazy. The other thing that's really cool about this land is Mary Poppins actually had a really big hand in it. The movie Mary Poppins was released in 1964 and it was a hit. So much money was made from that movie that Walt Disney was able to build New Orleans Square and all of its attractions. Parents of the Caribbean is a ride in New Orleans Square and it opened in 1967. This ride was actually going to be a walkthrough wax museum, but because of the popularity of It's a Small World, which was a water boat ride, they decided to make this the same type of ride. This ride contains 750,000 gallons of water, and anytime they have to work on the ride, they have to drain it, which takes three days, and an additional three days to refill it again. When this ride was built, Mr. Davis is actually the one, Mark Davis was the Imagineer that came up with the idea, and his wife, Alice Davis, is the one that created all of the costumes according to his thoughts and plans. When she was making the costumes, she actually asked Disneyland if she could have enough fabric to make two costumes for each pirate inside the ride in case they needed a duplicate, but they informed her that they didn't have the money for that. So she actually was able to buy cheaper fabric and buy enough to make two costumes anyways. It was a good thing that she did because only three months after the ride opened, there was a small fire, but multiple pirate costumes were burned. They were frantically trying to figure out what they were gonna do, but they went straight to Alice. She already had a maiden on hand and the ride was able to open up pretty quickly. Since that day, they actually keep three costumes extra for every pirate on hand. Well, you tried well, I'm pretty quick. How about we do a trade then? That ring of yours? Yeah. You like that? How much for it? What do you got? Well, name your price tag. Got some doubloons in here. How many more at the auction? Oh, I may have to go back to me. Yes. So if you decide to sell it, head over to the auction. Okay. Yes, you can strike a deal there. And it's a real diamond. It surely is. Very pretty. Very pretty. I've got those earrings. I'm going to sell those as well. Well, I could, I'd consider it. Yes. We could get quite a good to get these. You think so? I think so. Okay. It's a real silver in mine. Definitely. Very good. Yes, you can see what we're doing. All right, we'll let's get the portrait together. Sure. All right, do you mind if we head up these stairs? Okay, I don't mind at all. New Orleans Square, he wanted a place where VIPs could come and stay the night. So he started working on a suite up above Pirates of the Caribbean. He actually brought in the set designer from Gone with the Wind, Dorothea Redmond, so that she could help design it to give it that same kind of feel. Walt unfortunately passed away before the suite was finished and they actually ended up putting the plans off for quite some time. But in 1987, Disney decided that they were going to turn this into the Disney Gallery. They ended up having a lot of art on display up there for several years and in 2007, they went ahead and remodeled the suite and turned it into a suite and did a dream suite giveaway to random guests that were staying in the park that could stay up there. It has once again been reimagined. It is now 21 Royal, which is an exquisite and a very, very 
expensive restaurant right here in Disneyland. You have to have reservations and your reservations are going to be for a party of 12. You get, you get to go up with your party, have a meal, and it is $15,000. That's $1,250 a person, but it is amazing and it is worth it for the experience. Up above the Royal Street Veranda, in the ornate railing, you will find some golden initials, WD and RD. Those are the initials of Walt Disney and his brother, Roy Disney. Right next to the exit of Pirates of the Caribbean is a shop called Pieces of Eight. And up in the chandelier, you're going to see a monkey. That monkey is the inspiration from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, the little monkey of Captain Barbosa named Jack. Inside the window display of Pieces of Eight, you will also find an eerily adorable Captain Jack Sparrow voodoo doll. Up above the royal courtyard on the balcony, you'll see three flags. Those are the flags for Spain, the United States, and France. And that is because Louisiana was occupied once by each of those countries. As you walk through New Orleans Square, up on the buildings you may find iron plaques. These are insurance plaques. In the late 1800s, residents in New Orleans, Louisiana would purchase insurance plaques to show the firemen that they had really great insurance on their property. When the firemen would arrive, they would work extra hard if they saw one of those plaques to make sure to get the fire out. Unfortunately, if you didn't have one of those, I'm afraid some guy from down the street would just show up with a hose and try to put your fire out. But right here in New Orleans Square, you will find six of those plaques, and four of them are actually from New Orleans, Louisiana. Here in New Orleans Square, you'll see Mademoiselle Antoinette's Parfumery. This was completely designed in the idea of Walt Disney's wife, Lillian. She took her time and made this exactly what she wanted. In fact, there's even a chandelier in here that was given to her as a gift by Walt that she donated to Disneyland so that it could be on display here. This is actually a really great place if you are looking for a special perfume to come and buy it because their prices are very comparable to department store prices. And if you have an annual pass, you also will get a discount. Right here in New Orleans Square, you'll also find La Masquerade de New Orleans. This used to be a Mardi Gras mask shop, hence the mask bust right in the middle of the store. This has actually changed over the years to a home store, a hat store, all different types of things, but currently it is the Pandora jewelry store. Disneyland is a great place to bring your friends. And speaking of friends, if any of you are fans of show friends, you might notice as you're walking through New Orleans Square, right past the Pandora shop, if you look up, a replica of the banner that hung in their apartment in New York City on the show friends. As you near the train station here in New Orleans Square, listen carefully, you may hear a clacking sound. It's actually Morse code coming from the telegraph office right across from the train station. It is Morse code for Walt Disney's opening day speech right here at Disneyland. In his speech, he says, to all who come to Disneyland, welcome. Here, age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Along the rivers of America, just down by Haunted Mansion sits an old bricked up crypt that says 1764. It is said that the Imagineers, when they were originally building the Haunted Mansion, built a tunnel out and that within the tunnel there was going to be some sort of arcade and an actual exit out to this area, but it didn't end up working out size-wise, so they ended up bricking it up, putting 1764 on it, just to give people something to talk about. All right, everybody, we're gonna end our video here. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about New Orleans Square and some of its history. New Orleans Square is actually one of my favorite lands here at Disneyland. 
Also, just as a reminder, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you can be entered for the chance to win our 2013 Mercedes that we are giving away. Yes, we are doing a giveaway and there will be one lucky winner. Someone will win it. Someone will get to come, get it, and drive it home to be their very own. So make sure you subscribe to our channel in order to be eligible. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button as well. Bye.